So look, you wouldn't believe that all this insulation is literally just going to go in between the rafters. This is part L, this is part of the new regulations to give us the values that we need. It's stacked floor to ceiling and it covers a third of the loft there near enough. So that's, um, and this isn't all of it. There's another skin that goes underneath as well. So we've got to process all this. We're going to gapo tape all the edges and get it all up into these roof joists, into these roof rafters, these trusses. And it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Welcome back to this loft conversion that we're doing and we're busy going through all the insulation. Now I always think now this is one of the most difficult parts of the job because it's time consuming and as the regs changed and if you haven't seen the video we did on that I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen. Have a look at that as well it's all about the new part L changes. Eddie has been busy with Lloyd and they've been going all the way through. Now this job as I've mentioned before is quite unusual because all of the structural trusses are at 1200 centers with the odd one added at 600 but that was purely for stair trimming elsewhere. So what we've had to do is use virtually full sheets and we're using the gapo tape as well. We're using 120 mil in between. We've got a 175 rafter which gives us a 55 thereabouts, 50 mil airspace all the way over the top between the softwood sarking board that's on the outside of the rafters and it goes all the way as usual. We go from ridge all the way down to eave. So we put a continuous barrier of insulation all the way down. What I don't like to do, and I've said this before, is come up, come across the ceiling, up the wall, up the slope, across the ceiling and down. It's much better to create a thermos flask effect where you can go from the eave all the way up and all the way down. That means that all of our stud work on the inside, all of our boarding on the inside is all on the warm side. Wherever we run services like pipes, they can all go in the voids. We'll still insulate them because of the heat loss of the water inside the pipes. We don't want to get that, but they won't be affected by cold. Okay, so we've got an envelope which is completely insulated. It's a beautiful uh, way of doing things if you can do it right down to the wall plate, right up to the ridge. And I just think that um, for the additional work it takes to do that, you don't have all this complication at void walls such as here. All of this is on the warm side now, so you see there's no insulation here because that is on the warm side. We take our insulation past where the valley lays over on the outside, and then we continue it again here on this room as well. So we've got a really encapsulated roof. So that's basically how we've done this particular one. And because of the trusses at 1200 centers, we've got a stout timber now, which is mounted all the way through to suit our plasterboards okay and then we can plasterboard all the way through and then we can start bringing our stud work in underneath which is another nice way of doing things because you've got a nice continuous envelope again. So the other thing we're doing as well is we've got another layer which goes in underneath. Now we work out our U values based on a calculator. Those calculators are available from insulation suppliers on their websites. They're a little bit difficult to work sometimes if you've never done it before. And insulation in a roof is worked out on so many factors, even down to the spacings. For example, the more timber work you've got, the more insulation you may need because the more passage of coal coming through these rafters is multiplied by the amount of rafters that you get. And what we've got the luxury of is huge panels of insulation with the gapo tape, with the memory foam gapo tape, which makes a perfect fit. There's no gaps, there's no draft. And then underneath in this instance, we're using a 25 mil thick rail all the way through to catch the boards. We're then going in between that with another layer of PIR, 25 mil. So all together we're using around about 150 millimeters of insulation overall. Now, going back not so long, maybe 10 years, we'd use 50 in, 50 under, so 100, or sometimes you'd use 75 in, 25 under. But again, it all needs to be worked out on a job by job basis. So the guys have, um, got in here and they're just doing the internal skin here and again we take that all the way down to the bottom Ed's just working all the way through here and that goes all the way up to the ridge too so it's a really nice continuous job so yep yeah, insulation is key um, Ed have you enjoyed doing this? Yeah it's been really good it's been interesting putting the full shots full size sheets of 120 in I mean, every sheet has been ascribed. A lot of these trusses have been put up and there's bend in them and all sorts. Yeah, we better introduce someone because people may be <coughs> hearing this. Now, have a little look down there. This is the firm's pup. It's the newest member of the team. This is Bertie. 
Say hello, Bertie. <laughs> it's time for his toilet break, so he's getting a bit impatient. Oh, that's Bertie down there. So if you can hear Bertie in the background, it's no no problem. We don't, um, <laughs> we have, it's not one of our staff in a cage. It's not so. a mouse. Um, yeah, so. I also point out here, we've got some extra grounds. So we're working with the boards, we're railroading all the plasterboards. So our, from our door stud wall here, 1200 is exactly there. So we've got a board joint to catch all the plasterboard. It just worked out best for us to do it at that position because we've got collars to cut round, etc., and a small flat ceiling going in at the top. So one of the things we had to bear in mind was our board joints. In the other room, it's all right. We've managed to make it work, but in here we just had to add a bit more grounds in to catch the board joint. Yeah, so what we're doing in here is these collars will remain exposed. Um, it'll be a feature effectively. So the plaster goes right up to the top, small flat ceiling to enable some cables to pass through, a few down lighters and maybe some hanging lights as well, feature lights. And that's basically what we've done in here. So this is gonna be one area, three bedrooms, two bathrooms and a dressing room. So you can kind of see the scale of this place. If I walk right down the other end, it's just epic. I mean, it's, it's just fantastic. Imagine this. So one of the next jobs we'll be doing once the guys have finished all of these bits of insulation in between all of these rails is we're gonna be taking the floor up. Now there's not a lot wrong with this floor. However, some of the joists aren't that even. So I wanna flatten those off a little bit. And we're gonna put a new P5 Egger Protect all the way through, which is absolutely perfect for the bathrooms as well. It's one of the only boards that you can actually tile straight on as well. So there's another particularly good feature of it. So we're gonna be doing that. So we're gonna take half the floor up, put half the floor down. That enables us to build enough stud work to form a service cupboard. And inside that service cupboard, we've got a new electric water cylinder, which is gonna be a pressurized cylinder replacing the tanks above our heads at the moment. And we're putting in an electric boiler. We are in the middle of nowhere. We don't have gas, we don't have oil, we only have electric. So we're using quite a modern electric boiler just to do the central heating up the top and eventually some underfloor heating in another area of the house. All the rest of the dwelling is already really well insulated and it has storage heaters which actually work really well. So they'll remain. So they'll have the electricity storage heaters downstairs. Upstairs we're gonna have a few radiators running off the electric boiler. They won't need to um, run that often because already now this is like, as I said earlier, thermos flask. And then the electric boiler will also provide a flow and return to a manifold set that was, that's going to do an underfloor heating circuit in a new part of the dwelling which we're going to be building at some time soon. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Catch us all again soon and I appreciate you watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Thank you very much.